Hello everybody and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Podcast, episode number 85. Hello, Akroi Sarty Podcast, Reeve Oithig Pimp. My name is Mr. Gareth Evans. Joining me today is Mr. Henry Half a Bottle Cooper. <laughs> oh, that's, that's quite a good one. <laughs> uh, in reference to the amount of whiskey that you drank on your birthday, right? Well, it's my birthday, I'm allowed. Well, well, the the it was a comment, I put it, it was my pinned comment on yesterday's video, which, I mean, the news stories were fine. The, like the information was there, so there was stuff to work with. But I was, a li- I wasn't like really bad, but I was a little bit hungover. And old, I'm old now. I'm 25 now, so. Oh come on! Don't even no, start. But you, I mean, you've been there. You must know that every year the hangover gets worse every time. Yeah, which it is, gets harder. Which is why I quit I remember- drinking like four years ago because I'm way too old to be drinking now. <laughs> My 21st was night and day. I woke up on the evening after well, morning after my 21st birthday and i was like oh can i how, how much longer can i do this i feel proper shit <laughs> yeah. um so yeah i put away about half a bottle of whiskey we couldn't go anywhere because the world's fucking locked down still although technically now it's not so maybe yeah. i could go somewhere today that's true um so we had like a remote call with some friends and I mean, I, I was planning to drink a lot, no matter what. I don't know how much anyone else drank of anything, but uh, <laughs> I put away half a bottle of whiskey and realised maybe I should have just put, put the whole thing away and not bothered doing any work on Wednesday. <laughs> was it a litre bottle? Or was it like a 70-cent uh, litre? Uh, what... Yeah, it was a 70. So what? What? let me ask you this, because this is important. Like, What was your whiskey of choice? Because if it's... Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't anything that bad. It was uh, Jack Daniels, but, but oh, only... Only uh, bourbon man, Jack Daniel's yeah. honey. So even then, it's not it's not that, like a sweet, not a sweet bourbon. Wow! It's because it was on offer. So I was like, yeah, I think it was like yeah. sixteen pounds down from like twenty or something. Wow. I, like, I can't waste yeah. that. That's true. Jameson's was always my tipple of choice. Good James, oh, nice yeah. smooth Jameson's man. Mm. Jameson's is not generally. I don't. I mean, I'll drink Jack because it's there and it's often on offer because it's like the rock star one. So it's mm. like it's popular. Yeah, but Jameson's is good. Um. Did Any you, old did you did, really you, did you know Jack right? Daniels was Welsh? Did you know that? The original, the OG guy who made really? Jack Daniels was Welsh, yeah. Oh, well. Little, little well, he, well, he, he clearly fucked there, off yeah. to America because he hated it so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say that, but, um, you know, he, he you know he's a successful Welshman, one among many, uh, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go. Right, should we talk about some video game stuff? Yeah, well, we've got a, a huge um, kind of special this week. Cyberpunk... Everyone's talking about Cyberpunk. There's articles coming out. We're a week away now. Uh, as the time of recording, it's the, um, what is it? The third. So it's literally yeah. a week away. Literally a week away from my birthday. You've had a birthday week. I'm having a birthday week uh, next week. So, um, yeah. Cyberpunk has been talked about. Everyone's jumping on the uh, on the gravy train, talking about it again, excited. I'm allowing myself to get excited now. I'm at the point where... It's not going to be delayed anymore. I know I'm going to be able to play it. I'm not going to die, but hopefully in the next week. Um, there's, there's always a small chance, but um, I'm probably not going to die. Something, you know, there's a good chance I'm going to be able to play it this time next week. So I'm allowing myself to get excited about it. So therefore, we're going to, you know, no holes barred. We're just going to gush over Cyberpunk 2077 in today's episode of That's, oh, yeah. that's All Right by You Guys. And so that's going to be the main thrust of today's video, general shit chat. Uh, aside also and then we'll be taking some questions from the um, patreons uh, over on the discord Um, and obviously the quiz is part of that too which is uh, another corker this week and then after that we're going to um, triggered fanboy comment of the week or uh, the new segment which we're going to be called the pgg fanboy of the week so uh, we don't have like a triggered comment so we're going with the the person who's like put a nice comment in for us this week uh, that's we're going to trial that see if it works. It's probably not as uh, <laughs> not as exciting not as, as juicy, not as juicy. But, uh, but you never know. We might find some juicy comments after that. Yeah, obviously more comments to read, and then the bad dad joke of the week to finish off. So first up, Henry, there's been some happenings in our in our gaming setups. There's been some changes, right? I mean, first I'll, I'll tear this up first. I mentioned last week I was getting a three thirty seventy, um, which is a new graphics card. So I can ray trace the hell out of Cyberpunk. That arrived last Thursday, and I've been playing it with um, a lot of the games. So the first, my first choice was, oh, I want to try out this ray tracing malarkey, see what it's all about. So the only one that I had in my um, in my library was Metro Exodus. So I downloaded and played that. I was like, it's all right. 
I mean, it looked, it looks, mm, it, it wasn't one of those games where it was like a couple, it's still a couple of years old, right? And the ray tracing isn't great in it. So it was like, why am I playing this game? I'll have to play over and play through it. I might as well play something that I'm going to enjoy more. Um, so I jumped back inside the Outer Worlds because I hadn't completed that um, and cranked everything up on Ultra and I was having a whale of a time with that game. Um, uh, completed it now and yeah, uh, again, cemented one of my best games of last year, um, definitely. Uh, I will. I will. I was hoping to play through it again, but I thought I've only got like a week. Cyberpunk's coming out next week. I don't want to burn myself out on RPG games, first-person RPG games. I'll, I kind of, I'll uh, give it a, give it a bit of a, a rest, I guess, and and save my open world um, capacity for Cyberpunk. I thought. Um, so the other thing that's kind of I've I've been reflecting on this week is the way that I've changed the way I've, I'm gaming now because of my internet, right? I've, for those of you who aren't aware, you know, I've been the shittest internet for like the longest time. And now I've got pretty much a gigabit internet and that's completely changed how I game. So if I want to choose to download and install a game, say Game Pass, for example, there's a huge library there that are my fingertips. Um, 50 gigabytes, it's nothing. It's 20 minutes now. It's a cup of tea now. That's all it is. And I'm like, I want to play that game. I'll do it. Uh, and, and this week, I obviously downloaded and installed Metro Exodus. I dabbled again with Fallout 76. I've installed and played a bit of Wasteland 3. Played Worms WMD on the Discord with um, Earthworm Ben. And I've installed Halo the Master Chief Collection again on the Game Pass. And that's over 100 gigabytes in size. And it was nothing. It was nothing. And in the past, one of those games, well, excluding Worms, would have been an overnight, if not a 24 hour commitment, right? I used to have to commit, like, oh, oh I want to play this game, this is awesome. I might be able to play it tomorrow if my internet's good. That's the way I used yeah. to think about it. And it's turned me into some, I, I don't know, I feel like uh, I'm, I'm playing fast and loose with these games now. I'm just picking them up, 50 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes here and there, just having one night stands or one hour stands with these games. I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit loose, fast and loose now. I'm like re re rediscovering my youth. And, uh, and it's all down to this internet, right? It's completely changed the way that I consume games. And the Game Pass is part of that too. And I think this is great. I think this has brought me a whole new lease of life. I can just dabble with the game if you don't like it and throw it away, download it and install another 100 gigabytes game. It sounds like a bit of a sick brag. And in part it is. <laughs> um, but it's opened up a, a whole new way of gaming now, the Game Pass plus the fast internet. And I think that's, uh, I don't know, it's just something to reflect on and think, hmm, it, technology, this, you know, subscription model not everyone's into it but gives you games at your fingertips and then the, the new technology with the, the internet it's um it's a game changer for me it really is so um yeah i don't understand how anyone can be against the uh the game pass or, or services like it really like it, it's similar things like netflix right how can you be against it because you don't own any of it and that's fine because you can still go off and buy them like i i have um pretty much every streaming service um I think I pay for no, I pay for Spotify and Disney Plus. My girlfriend pays for Netflix and Amazon Prime because she does more delivery stuff. We use it for TV as well, um, but we also buy DVDs all the time, so we still own like hard copies of stuff. Like you, that's still yeah. an option, but you don't have to. Like we could just live with the, these stream services. Same with Game Pass. <clears throat> if you want to own the game, you can still buy it. But yeah. if you want to just have lots of little things and try them all out at once, especially for like. Uh, um, Microsoft like exclusives, right? Because I think all of them henceforth are coming there. Day game one pass on day one, yeah. Which is it's insane. It's a barrier breaker, is what it is. And yeah. I, I think for the the gamer like me who doesn't like to commit to paying fifty pounds for a game and then deciding, oh, this is shit. I don't really want. Uh, you know, I've wasted my money here or whatever. Like a game a game pass subscription like that, it just lowers the entry barrier for entry. Yeah. You can just dabble with games and and just play around with them a little bit. Uh, and then you know if you if you want to play more of it you know you, you stick to it and i think that's that's just great i think the whole thing is is fantastic the bad news is that my subscription runs out on the 12th uh so i'm gonna have to stop because i bought like 12 months of game 12 month pass of like the base uh game pass and then i upgraded metal shark help, uh, got me uh, <laughs> there's a there's a little deal that you could do right if you bought bought a certain amount of time and then upgraded one month of premium then you'd get like 
loads of money. So it's like 18 months worth that I had paid for. It's coming to an end now, so I'm going to have to start paying monthly if I want to continue. So I'm probably going to do that, um, to be fair, because it is, it is well worth it. But talking of my gaming kind of um, epiphanies and, and changing the way that gaming happens for me, Henry, you've got your, you've got your own... Um, new lease of life about to about to happen, right? Well, yeah, very much about to. Like as of recording this podcast, it hasn't happened yet. But as of finishing it, it will have started. So I, I don't know if you can see in frame, but it's just not in frame now. In there, we believe you. Um, I'm not. I'm not picking it up. Somewhere. It's really fucking heavy. Is a monstrous gaming PC, courtesy of well, partially you for all of my very long and hard work that I've been doing for a long time, and partially the, the tech genius that is Metal Shark, <laughs> because he does so much for us. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so yeah. I, I don't really know <laughs> anything about any of it. Wait, Sh- me- Metal Shark has sent me, like, pages and pages of, like, here, here's like it's like an FAQ basically. Oh, if you have this is what this does. This yeah. is what this does. So you can read more about here if you need to. I love but it. Long story short, plug this in there, and then, then there you go. So you're embarking on the journey of becoming a PC gamer. You're literally signing up for the PC Master Race to to date. You've got the box in your home, and it's the first time it's you've owned a, a PC, a PC. And and Metal Shark and I have had a bit of back, back and forth about you no know, just taking in the moment to to fit. You know, like he compared you to like Bambi. Uh, not knowing, mm-hmm. you know, a bit, a bit naive, not knowing exactly what. And yeah. I, I was like, you're more like Frodo, like Frodo from Lord of the Rings. Doesn't know the power <laughs> that he's got in his hands because um, this setup is a pretty beefy setup, right? For someone who's starting out on the gaming PC. Oh, hitting the ground with a with a, 30, with a 3080, with a 3080 uh, uh, graphics card. And my God, that thing is a beast. And to to have that as your first experience PC gaming. I'm hoping you're going to like it. Otherwise, I'm taking the 3080 <laughs> because I only managed to get a 3070 uh, because of um, limited stock. So uh, if you don't like it, dude, I will, I will take that off you. Um, <laughs> well, there is no way I won't like it. Down. And if I don't, there's not a chance I'm saying it. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. So keep it to yourself because you, yeah. uh, you will get lynched by the community. So I'm really, I'm really excited for you, dude. I really want you to... Um, I'm really excited for you to get, especially great timing with Cyberpunk coming out next week too. Yeah, and um, you know, I right- had to cancel two separate pre-orders and place a new one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. I mean, you want to play it on the best possible machine, yeah. and you've got that now. You you'll be able to. I'm, you know, you're getting a 14 to 40p um, screen, 32 inch screen as well. So yeah, you're going to be able to ray trace uh, at you know, and. Uh, an unbound frame rate, frame rates like 60 fps plus on that thing which is better than any other playstation 5 better than what the xbox series x uh, new generation consoles better than any of those can do so you're set up for at least a good few years of playing yeah. the best games on ultra i mean i can play all these games that i've been playing i can play them all on ultra settings uh, on my 1440p monitor and 60 plus frames per second. And that's on the, lo- you know, the graphics card that's one lower to yours. Yours is better than mine, right? So <laughs> you're gonna be blowing the hell out of these games. I'm quite intimidated by it. Like there's so much- There is a lot to learn. So much power. But it, it, <laughs> okay. it's, it's about options, right? You've got so many different options at your disposal now, whereas um, consoles, you just you just have to do with, mm. make, make do with that. You've got games coming out of your arse now on Steam. You've got indie games. You've got strategy games. That, yeah, you've got. That's s- always been my biggest, um, you know, looking looking at the over the fence at the PC gaming crowd is just the library of and diversity of something like Steam. If I want to play a fucking awful glitchy hentai game, I now can, <laughs> and now I can refuse to do I that was gonna- because it's an option I have and I don't need to look at. Yeah, it. I was going to ask you what was what would what's the first thing you're going to do uh, when when you get the game is. PC setup, and now I think you've answered that, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm gonna have to. I'll see if I can ray trace some anime titties. Or Entire, yeah. Something. There you go. So, uh, um, but yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Is that what you're most excited for? What? What? what no, seriously though. What? What is uh, your first on the agenda? Um, well, I think. Well, so my monitor, uh, which I bought, that's not arriving till next week. So I could, I can either wait until that comes and really. You know, capitalize everything all at once and really go for it. Or I've got this monitor which I'm currently using, which is just a very, very basic, just external monitor, so we can dual screen. That's literally all it's for. Uh, so I could put it in that 
but it's still you know, it's just not going to be it it's not yeah. going to be and I think you have to though worth it so I think I'm just going to sit on it for a bit mm. wait until Tuesday not sure if I can if I can bear it if I can bear it because <laughs> that's my only other option is to use this one which yeah. is you know functionally fine but it's not a gaming monitor or anything Does, uh, that doesn't matter and then break it in and then break it in with Cyberpunk and uh, really you know christen it with, with that game <laughs> or, I mean it could very easily be awful like it could be really glitchy I'm foreseeing it's going to have plenty of its own problems Cyberpunk you mean now yeah yeah Oh yeah, yeah, not not on the PC. Cyberpunk specifically, it's going to have yeah. so many issues at launch. But so did um, so did The Witcher Three. So that's true. And eventually, it got there. Well, I'm not, I'm not justifying launching like that, <clears throat> but yeah. just worth remembering. So I guess that kind of leads us naturally onto Cyberpunk, and it being just seven days away, um, it is one of the games of the generation. Uh, I know it's kind of next generation now will it be remembered at the end of the generation I don't know one of the games of the decade I know a new new decade as well games of the year that's for sure I mean it's the, one of the most anticipated games for a long long time yeah based on anticipation alone like we don't know how it's going to play we don't have it we don't we didn't get any review codes or anything not through lack of trying uh, but for sheer hype it's worth mentioning you know like it, it has its place in history already and it's not even out but, yet but not only that i mean everyone who's played it has had previews had hands on with it mm. there's been many outlets who have yeah. had 16 hours on the game now not one of them have much negative to say about it and that speaks volumes yeah That's, i mean you could you can you can always argue oh it's the the bloody games journalists they're just brown nosing or whatever and i'm like right yeah but at the moment Things are looking positive. I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit sceptical because a lot of them were the same with Red Dead Redemption 2. And, and I see a lot of parallels with that game, um, Red Dead Redemption 2. And I didn't really connect with that game. It was too too slow for me. It, it just, I mean, it's a great game. You, you, can, you just have mm. to look at it to know that it's a great game. But there was something on the, <clears throat> it just didn't connect. In a, in a gamer you know it didn't it didn't appeal to my yeah. inner gamer um so yeah i'm still a little bit hesitant but then again cyberpunk is different so i've been thinking about the things that um you're most looking forward to in the game um so how about yourself i mean there's there's a lot there's so much to it we could talk about everything that's in the game until the cows come home we don't really want to go over that a lot of people are are covering that type of stuff now but what what yeah. for you personally you're most looking forward to about cyberpunk well, so CD projects are really good at role-playing experiences, right? So in The Witcher, you play as one character, Geralt, who has his own backstory and stuff, but you can play him more or less however you want. But this, because it's actually a much broader character, it's you're not... Well, you're called V and you're a mercenary, but beyond that, you get way more control over their backstory and stuff and who they are. The character that creator, what, you get to make yeah. your own face or whatever. A face you'll never see because it's first person. Make your own junk I'm as well. I'm still going to spend... Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm picking the biggest wang. Super jet. <laughs> Super wang. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Super But diddies. that's what I'm looking forward to is customising my penis and role-playing, <laughs> like, to the maximum uh, of just... Not... Like, I often fall into the trap uh, of when if I'm playing an RPG. Oh, I'll just do what I would do. But I kind of want to play it more like... Yeah. from a perspective of this is their own character and how would they behave in this this kind of scenario. So there's, um, there's, there's three starting um, classes, right? Or, yeah, you know, you can be a nomad, you can be a si street, six, what do they call them? The street kid. Street kid or a corpo. So ve all three very different backgrounds. Nomad is the, you know, someone who lives out in the wastelands or whatever, comes to the city, starts a new life there the street kid is someone who's grown up on the streets has seen you know lived in poverty or whatever a bit a bit streetwise and there's the corpo who is um the basically worked for the one of the big organizations um so you're, you're a bit used to the lavish lifestyle and then you, you know you, you went to the mercenary job place so which one are you going to choose and why well my first well this kind of game it, it, it encourages multiple playthroughs so ideally i do that but my first one is nomad then street kid then corpo nomad i just feel like i want to be that like mad max kind of vibe like yeah lawlessness in the wasteland and then you're coming into this you know crazy over the top sci-fi city and and it's kind of fish out of water in that respect because each of these um classes they open up different options for dialogue, but also different quests. So, so they are all very different. So I think being someone from outside the city should give him really an interesting insight into how everything works. Yeah. 
Um, in, in terms of, I think I'm going to go with Street Kid to begin. I was thinking, but I was on an arm between Street Kid and Corpo, but I, I don't know. I just don't want to be that entitled Corpo rich rich kid. It isn't really um, that'll be my my me. evil run. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But then again, um, you know, you are free to make your own decisions and to you know to be the person you want. You know, be the character, play the character the way you want to. So you don't have to uh, um, have the same ideals as the, the corporations or whatever. You can play it. Mm-hmm. You know, you can sympathise with whatever faction you want. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna start with Street Kid and see where it goes from there. So in terms of what I'm most looking forward to, there's just a whole ream of things, right? And everything I hear about and everything I see about it makes me that much more excited. Which is, you know, it's not because I love CD Projekt Red's pro- previous games. I've played Witcher Three numerous times. I've said it before. I'm not really connected with it. It doesn't really connect with me. However, there's so much more to Cyberpunk that connects with me already having just looked at it right it's the it's the settings the sci-fi futuristic setting i I love that genre i just i've always loved sci-fi um sci-fi you know lots of tech futuristic tech uh setting and that that ticks that box it ticks the first person box for me um first person games are my are my bread and butter i've played them my whole life i've been a pc gamer majority of my my life now um so yeah first person is what i would choose rpg as well uh rpg is just the games that i love the most and it's the proper rpg and i i i saw that it had the same kind of progression in terms of um your uh, skills as skyrim as in the more you use something the more you do something the better you get at it so if you've got a handgun you, you shoot your gun more often then you get better at it like you do in Sky. It's the best RPG leveling system. It's not an arbitrary system. Like you get, you get to allocate points to upgrade your your skills. It's like no, I I I want to feel like I've earned it, not just arbitrarily. Like oh, I've got yeah. I've got this big case of uh, six points now. I'm gonna make myself better at, at um at shooting guns. That's not how it works in real life. The more you do something, the more you should be the more the better you get yeah. at it. And I love that because it, it And you can ignore the stuff you don't use. Like if you never use yeah. handguns, then they're not going to upgrade and the stuff yeah. you do use will be better. So in terms of like cutting down to the, 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 the biggest because <laughs> I could go on forever by what I'm expect what I'm um I look most looking forward to but those are the big, biggest things that I'm looking forward to that's for sure and and just the world right you look at you just have to look at it it's literally the best looking game world that I've ever seen and I can't wait to get stuck into it just a just a thought of having just this huge city quite compact um and just being able to explore and just to not not taking three, 30 minutes or 10 minutes to go on your horse from one settlement to another before you get something else yeah. exciting. Or like, oh, there's a deer running around. That's that's exciting. Or there's a there's a stranger I got to go and talk to like 50 meters down the way. No, everything's there. Everything's bright. Everything's shiny. Everything's in your face. And it's and it's maybe on the point of being overwhelming, but it's it's all there. I, I'm just really looking forward to being in that world. Like I said, this was an episode about us gushing over cyberpunk. Oh, I yeah. did warn you guys. This is heavily biased. Like, <laughs> don't mistake that. <laughs> We're going to be upfront with that. But yeah, like the world, that's exactly what I like. Like open world games. I there's so many like Ubisofty bad ones that are just full of shit. But fundamentally, I still really really like open world games because it's a level of freedom that you just can't get in linear games linear games do certainly have their place the best example of that are like naughty dog games who are really good at focused linear things regardless of your opinion on on like the last of us or something Mm. but something so broad and so open with so many options like in your character and how you want to play them and how you want to interact with people and the items you use or the weapons you use and the skills you 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 know work towards all of that just sounds like such an such an incredible playground that every game tries and every game kind of over promises it and cyberpunk could very easily uh, fail to to reach those expectations and meet those promises yeah but it certainly looks the closest out of every other one that has given it a go i i think there's i i'm hoping that cyberpunk like crafts a new niche in in gaming right i think at the moment you you mentioned um a ubisoft open world game just then and um you know, these are the most consumed AAA games, the open world um, action, third person action games. This yeah. is, and, and a lot of people are saying, um, well, Cyberpunk is just a futuristic Grand Theft Auto. And I, 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 I think that people's expectations might be yeah. a bit, 
bit misled by that. Right? I hate that take. I, I hate seeing it because it comes up every now and then. It's like, oh, it's just sci-fi GTA. I'm like, you are so fucking wrong. And this is <laughs> like, and this is where I'm I'm kind of questioning what people. I'm, I'm not talking about people who were informed like us. People who like live and breathe cyberpunk <laughs> going in. People who've informed themselves. Watch the the Nightwire. Um, on the streams and stuff like that. I'm talking about you know your general just Assassin's Creed um, player who gets what one every year. It's like yeah, this is awesome. Assassin's Creed are awesome. Get it every year. And you know those type of non less informed gamers, should we say, casuals, we we could call them. Um, what are they expecting from the game? Because if they are expecting a, th- a third per- person open world game and the likes of GTA, future GTA, or just another Assassin's Creed, but set in the future, I think they're going to be, um, their expectations are going to be dashed pretty yeah. early on. And for example, to illustrate it, um, carjacking in Cyberpunk 2077, you can't do that until you unlock a skill to be able to do that, right? You can't just walk yeah. up to any car and, and carjack it because this is an RPG. You have to earn your, your, earn your right to be able to do stuff in the world. Well, that's one thing I really like about it as well. Like, uh, skill upgrades are something that happens in RPGs, and it's a it's a genre convention, which we you know it, it's one of the selling points of the genre because you can you know build your character how you want to. But in Cyberpunk, it's all justified in the story itself because if you get an upgrade for your character, that's actually an upgrade you get on your body. Like if you, I think it's one you're meant to get quite early on. Um, to see how much ammo you have left at a given time, or, or like basically a heads up display, you get an upgrade on your hand, which then like communicates with the gun or something like that just like this hack this hijacking thing you'll get a an implant or some cybernetic gadget which can allow you to do that which i think is is really cool it's one of those stories where everything about the gameplay is justified by story and i think that's something games are getting better at but games need to justify why they're a game yeah not why they're a movie yeah. this is why cyberpunk is a game and not a movie yeah everything to make sense within the universe right everything to be yeah. coherent uh, talking of expectations, PC Gamer um, stated in their article, after having played 15 hours as, in a preview of Cyberpunk, they said, quote, The game's marketing has, understandably, focused on the louder, more aggressive side of the game, which has painted a somewhat inaccurate picture of it. Cyberpunk 2077 isn't all noise, future slang, extreme violence, and fluorescent yellow. It has quiet, touching moments of warmth, too. Um, so, in terms of... You know, he's indicating that the market in there is, is trying to sell it a certain way, which is what might be pitting people's expectations in one direction, and then they might be quashed by the fact that <laughs> this isn't the game that they've mm. been expecting. And I remember um, going into Red, De- Red Dead Redemption Two, where everyone was expect. Well, the journalists were saying at the very least that everyone's expecting the GTA, but in in Wild West G- GTA, uh, and then some of the. Clo- behind closed doors previews were p- where journalists or people were subject to watching some gameplay a lot of people journalists coming out of that were saying that the game was boring that I put them to sleep and that the game was slow and lo and yep. behold it turned out that for me at the very least that's that's kind of how it panned out so uh, it, like I said uh, there's a couple of parallels here with Red Dead Redemption 2 and, and um, for, for me at the very least I don't know if it's the same for you but mm. Well, like one of my uh, one of my friends messaged uh, like our group chat recently. I think they were asking, "Am I getting the PS5 or something?" And I said, "No, there's not. I don't think there's any point. There's nothing that I can't get somewhere else. Or like once God of War comes out, then I'll pro- then I might get one like especially for that type of thing." I mean, talk- talking about a bit of a chat about gaming, but none of them are. Uh, I hate this sort of terminology, but like hardcore gamers, yeah. you know, like he Let's plays call them educated gamers. Yeah, oh yeah, he plays uh, like Ghost of Tsushima. He really really enjoyed Red Dead. Uh, but he's not he's not like a Call of Duty person, really, right. I, or a FIFA. He's not one of them, but yeah, he plays what he plays, but it's not like a massive hobby. And he said, oh, I'm really looking forward to Cyberpunk. And I was like, me too. Like, awesome. But I just need to make sure, like, this isn't GTA, right? You know what it is. And But he, he one of his favorite games ever is um, Oblivion and Skyrim. Ah. So I'm like, well, okay, so you're, you're, you will like it then. You will still like it, even if you do think it's um, GTA sci-fi you might then be pleasantly surprised to find that it's actually a massive RPG where you're not shooting people like all the fucking time but I think there is a serious segment of yeah un- un- uninformed people who will just see it on a shelf be like oh like sci-fi thing oh they're, they're, they're gonna go around and shoot people that sounds fun and then they're gonna spend most of their game like talking to people and, and making dialogue options and wasting time 
in skill um, skill progression, that sort of shit, when maybe that's not what they're after. But I don't, I don't know if you can really fault CD Projekt's marketing team for that, because, I mean, like it, it makes sense to to promote the like big, you know, shinier aspects stuff, of the game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but maybe if they did more, like long play uncut sequences of gameplay because they haven't done really many of them apart from the first one I think they're, they're, they're normally like cut up yeah like um edited sliced up sequences rather than you know a long play of a whole quest so to speak yeah I mean but I I, I, th- I don't think that the I mean there's enough information out there generated by CD mm. Project Red to inform people who want to know about the game what it's going to be yeah. like. I don't, I don't think this is misleading at all because they've no, shown so, so many previews a lot. So many people have hands on with it. It's not like they're, they're carefully controlling what's being put out there to the, the media and, and giving a, a false impression of what the game's going to play like. Not, that's not the case at all. I'm not sure whether um, they actually, it's a valid point by the PC gamer. Um, I don't know the guy who wrote it, but... Um, well, even, even they said... Uh, uh, the marketing has understandably focused on the loud blah 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 uh, painted a somewhat inaccurate picture and I guess all right, not, you could certainly argue it is a somewhat inaccurate picture but but that's just because it's a it's like this much of the picture when there's all of this other stuff yeah, yeah. so well there you go um, so in terms of hype I mean maybe it's just my my observation of this situation I, I maybe I th- maybe I'm completely wrong maybe everyone across the board is going to love it but I I, I strongly expect that a lot of people are just going to think it's trash because it's just not not yeah. as accessible uh, as some other games that they're expecting and their expectations might be just way off and i think that you know if you're educating yourself going into the game that's that's going to be avoided straight away but i, I don't know I, I i can't help but expect the worst out of people um especially well, yeah, people think, who don't play a lot and the people who are the kind of people who are going to be watching channels like ours or, or, or others who cover this sort of thing they're going to be the people who are, you know, accurately informed about this is an RPG slash first-person shooter, yeah. not first-person shooter slash RPG, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think so I feel like it's going to be the people, again, ca- casuals who just see a, 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 a trailer on TV, well, like one of the flashy CGI ones or the one with uh, Keanu in it. Yeah. And they'll pick it up and be like, oh, cool. And then, you know. I think the biggest bone of contention for a lot of people will be that it's first-person only. And I think to understand what they're trying to achieve with that and to and to the fact that they want people to feel like the the, the, the character. The, the the city is small, it's confined, it's not like an open world, there's not like huge open spaces. It's more like a yeah. pr- pr- on top of you. And they want you to see through the eyes of V. They want you to be and an inhabit and embody V. And they want things to happen to you and they want you to feel like V. And that's why they want you to be that person. And this is a game this is a um, game development choice this isn't this isn't them yeah. not dis- deciding not to do third person because they they don't want you to have fun in third person they want you to experience the game in a certain way and I think that a lot of people who will criticise it for not being first person just won't understand what they're trying to get out with the game and I think that's where the one of the a lot of the noise around launch will be personally mm-hmm. yeah like I totally agree uh, they've explicitly said they believe uh, in their design process that creating it in a first person perspective creates it, it makes a more immersive experience personally I've said this a lot I generally prefer third person games like I'll see my character especially if I can create them like I can in this but I'll, I'm not gonna like complain because that's what they want to do it's the way they want to create their game and their art but at the same time I've also said several times I really wouldn't be surprised if they did whack in a third person mode sometime in I don't know, like the next year or so, two yeah. years. I th- just I like would. uh like GTA did with yeah. um adding in first person for the next gen upgrade. Like if they came out and were like, oh for the uh the PS5 version, because that that doesn't have a release date yet, the PS5 and XX S X box series X, it's just fucking say the long name. <laughs> Those versions aren't coming out yet. You can play it through backwards yeah. compatibility on them, but it's the old yeah. last gen version. Once the new gen version proper comes out I could fully see them being like, oh, there's new features, like some extra bits of DLC that they'll all They're launch promised, at the same time, yeah. and a third person mode. I, I would be third surprised. Person I really would be surprised given how they've pitched it, how, how they've defended the fact, the reason why it's first person. 
Um, having used those reasons, I think to go third person or allow third person after that, I guess they, they could say that, oh, they're just giving the fans what they want. Um, yeah, but I, as an extra option. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be against this so much. I just don't think, um, given the, the reason that they're stated, um, I just don't think that's... Um, that would be coherent. Uh, I think they'd be uh, they'd be standing on their own toes, really, uh, making that decision. True, but I think CDPR are so proud to be the like the bastion of pro consumer um, of companies that they I would I wouldn't be surprised if they put it in just because people yeah. are asking for it. Yeah, it's like that um, debate around like the Dark Souls or Sekiro type of games. It's yeah. like get. Why? Why don't you give people the an easy mode so they can in, more people can enjoy it? Well, it's the way the, the way the game is supposed to be played, and it's the artistic vision. Yeah. You have to play it this way. It's like, well, give people more options, and more people can enjoy your game. It's the same kind of the same with Cyberpunk. It's I very think. much up to them. Yeah, it's very very much up to them. And it's, and again, with the uh, with the the core Souls fan base, uh, they most of them are like, don't put an easy mode in because it should be played this way. Whereas no, I get good core, scrub. Yeah, the, yeah, that crowd. Uh, whereas the core cyberpunk audience, I don't think gives as much of a shit about it being single pl- uh, first person only. Because again, if it if they do add a third person, it's not going to be only third person from then on. It's just an extra option. Much like if they did add an easy mode in the Souls game, it would be an option. But also, it's down to them, and you can't disparage them either way because it's their uh, like creative choice. Yeah, and maybe it's going to be a real fucking pain in the ass. Maybe it's really really hard to do on a game of this scale. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there might be yeah problems with the camera and stuff like that, and uh, you know the animation of the character, which they haven't had to do because you know putting your they don't need to worry about yeah, it. and having small spaces going through small spaces like corridors and and in big city buildings, it might be difficult mm. just technically. Well, I don't know if this is just me, and I, I feel like I may have talked about this before, but the first thing I do in any first person game is immediately look down and see if I have legs. Yeah. And, so, and I think someone, I think they might have already come out and say that, like previous uh, previews and stuff about Cyberpunk, but that will be the very, very first action yeah. I take in gameplay after generating my character will be to see if I had legs. You also want to uh, widen your field of view, especially with a huge monitor and the oh, option yeah. to do that. You want to you want to go on that slider and do it all the way to the top. And if it, <laughs> it makes you feel a little bit nauseous, then just crank it down a little bit. But that's my pro uh, PC gamer tip for you. Pro gamer. <laughs> <laughs> pro PC gamer honest, tip for you. The hardest part is going to be finding like a space to make it fit this desk is it's not the biggest <laughs> wow of all the problems I, I upgrade the desk first of all well. problems yeah, exactly, man exactly, exactly, given the, right? <laughs> they give me this pc i don't even know where to put it god damn it well this is a very small room like there, there's stuff everywhere on the desk and either side of it so it's going to be a an afternoon of puzzle solving <laughs> I'm sure you can figure out, Henry. You're, yeah, be, you're, 20, I'm, I'm you're a, a mature man, man now. You're 25 years old. You can. I'm sure you can figure that one out. <laughs> Upgrade your intellect in the in the <laughs> at the same time. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, prepared notes for Cyberpunk. There's, I'm I'm glancing over some of the other articles that I've been um, read. There's a. Are you interested in a photo mode? Are you, that kind of thing that you do because that's. I, yeah, I I actually do really enjoy photo modes mainly because. Uh, well, I mean, you can take cool pictures and stuff, but I like using it to look at assets, like to look at your character and just get a, a feel of the world. Normally, it's, it's in, you know, in the first few hours, I'll be like, oh, look at look at the detail on this guy's face. But yeah, I, I like photo modes. I think they're quite they're quite a cool little extra addition, and they're becoming more common now. Yeah, um, I think that's it. I th- you know, in terms of cyber, we talk about it all day, but I think uh, we'll have to move on. That's so that's our like gushing of cyberpunk out of the way. Unless you got anything else. Um, that you did want to discuss <clears throat> we can move on to the next segment which is the yeah. community let's roll let's roll with it um community segment so um <clears throat> yeah this is <clears throat> this is where we uh, read out some questions before i do that though uh, i do, do like to mention people who have um put their hands in the pocket to support the channel over the last week and you know, the people who have increased their pleasures there's two people marcus hicks has to, uh, increased his pledge from five bucks to ten bucks. Oh my god! Thanks very much, Mr. Hicks. Appreciate that, dude. Neil Roberts is another one done exactly the same. Increased from five dollars a month to ten dollars per month. Every single dollar of donation really helps um, us out because we are struggling to pay the bills with the revenue that 
um, YouTube gives us for the AdSense. So the patrons and the patron and the YouTube memberships as well um, really make a difference to enable us to continue making this content. So if you do enjoy our content and you want to see us continue, head over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. You get early access to the podcast by a couple of days. You also get to ask us questions and you get to join the Discord community and have a chat with us. Um, you can do that on Patreon as well as on YouTube memberships. And like I said, every single dollar helps. It really, really helps and we we really appreciate it. So please support the channel if you, if you like us. Um, and with that said, let's move on to the questions this week. The first one is the quiz of the week. However, uh, it's usually by Mr. Metal Shark. And, but this time, Mr. Earthworm Ben has stepped up to the plate and it's his quiz this week, but it's exactly the same format and it's who wants to be a gaming know-it-all. So, Henry, it's you to be the contestant in this week's who wants to be a gaming know-it-all and I will read the intro. Welcome one and all to this week's who wants to be a gaming know-it-all featuring your host, me, that's me, Gareth Evans, and this week's contender, Mr. Henry Half a Ball Cooper. Hooray! High energy applause, please. Thank you very much. With one of the biggest games of the year releasing in the next week on 10th of December, my birthday, <laughs> he's written it in first person. Brilliant. <laughs> this quiz has been focused around the genre that inspired not only the role playing game, but the game of the the genre of the same name. Of course, we talk about cyberpunk, which is very apt because this is a cyberpunk special podcast. All right, then. Let's go to question number one. Henry, if you're ready, I will read. The original film, Westworld, had a plot by which a theme park where androids that are indistinguishable from, indistinguishable from humans end up malfunctioning and killing guests. What year was the film released in? Do, is it A, 1969, B, 1973, C, 1984, or D, 1991? You have three lifelines. You can 50-50. You can ask me or you can Google up to a three-word um, phrase. Right. So I know Westworld, they did like a, a remake, sequel, reboot TV series recently, didn't they? Which is meant to be very good, but I haven't, I haven't watched it. Uh, but that was like within the last few years, and that, the original I know the, is quite old. The original and it film. looks, it looks, it looks old. Like yeah, I don't think it's 1969 old. So my instinct is 1973 because there's a, there's a turning point as soon as things hit the 80s, something about audio quality just goes through the roof. I don't it's like someone must have invented something. I don't know anything about it, but I want to say. B, 1973. Uh, and the correct answer is... B, 1973, correct. Yes. That's one from one. Well done, Henry, for stabbing the dark there. That was a good... Yeah, it really was. <laughs> Question number two. Johnny Silverhand, Silverhand is not the first time Keanu Reeves has been in a cyberpunk role or played a guy named Johnny. However, when has he done both before in a film role? Is... A, Constantine, B, Point Break, C, Johnny Mnemonic, or D, John Wick? Right, let me just check the exact wording of this question, because I think this might be a trick question. When has he done When has he done both before in a film role? So, so when has he played he's play, a Johnny? playing a character called Johnny and a cyberpunk sci-fi kind of thing. Yeah. So he's John, John Constantine in Constantine, who is a... He's a demon hunter based on a DC comic book. Point Break, he's... Johnny Utah, which is a rookie F FBI agent. <laughs> Fucking love Point Break. It's a brilliant. It is good. Johnny Mnemonic, which I'm pretty sure is the the cyberpunk one, and I haven't seen that one, but I'm quite sure that's it. And John Wick, he is a sharp dressed assassin. Uh, so I think it's C. Johnny Mnemonic is correct, but it put me off because it says D. Uh, sorry, B, Johnny Mnemonic, in the answer. The answer is C, Johnny Mnemonic. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's two out of two. Johnny Utah is definitely not a, sci a cyberpunk character. <laughs> <laughs> so that's two from two. Question number three. Blade Runner took a potential look at the cities of the future and the dystopian future they could hold. What city is Blade Runner set in? Is it A, Los Angeles, B, Chicago, C, San Diego, or D, San Francisco? Uh, I've seen Blade Runner once and it was years ago and I didn't like it. I think it's really overrated. 
Did you just I say think, that? Wow. Yeah, uh, it's one of those. It's quite slow, isn't it? It's one of the classic movies that I think is overrated because I think other movies have come along and done it better. Yeah. Um. I don't. I think Los Angeles is too easy. Like that's that's the everything's in LA. Everything's <laughs> in LA all the time. I don't think it's Chicago because I I, a, I do have a feel like feeling that it's on um the the west coast but then again that's the only one that isn't so maybe that's that's a reason to buy it san diego or san francisco san francisco is that's the one with all the hills right i think san francisco is the hilly one i don't remember the cityscape being particularly hilly but that i died uh, this is only question three so i don't want to use a lifeline yet but I think I'm going to have a go with San Diego. San Diego is your answer. <clears throat> the actual answer is Los Angeles. No, it's always fucking Los you Angeles. You said it yourself. It? It's always Los Angeles. Always and Los then Angeles. you went with All something right. else. My goodness me. So that's. T- like, I'm not too mad about being wrong about that one. Because in a roundabout way, I'm right in the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that makes sense in your head. Uh, quite- it's not good enough to get a point, but... <laughs> All right, so that's two from three. Question number four. In the cyberpunk game by Mike Pondsmith, what has always been a core concept when creating your character? A, rule of respect. B, rule of cool. C, rule of cash. D, rule of authority. I'm quite sure it's the rule of cool, I think. Because it's because cyberpunk is all about... Is that not a contradiction? I'm sure it's this cool, I think. Well, yeah, perhaps. But uh, it's because cyberpunk's all about style over substance it's about looking cool it doesn't really matter about actually being functional so yeah i'll go b rule of cool it's good logic and it's correct uh b rule yeah, of cool. and, it, and it sounds good rule like of cool. it's a it's a nice mantra cool. to, to be able to say cool is one of your core attributes in the in the mm. game right there's five of them so being cool your level of cool um yeah it's like strength intelligence and cool cool <laughs> Um, okay, so that's three from four so far. Question number five next. What Stephen King film adaptation was also used to help market American gladiators? A, The Shining. B, The Dead Zone. C, Maximum Overdrive. Or D, The Running Man. Uh, I've seen two of those. I've seen The Shining and that's... Uh, well, that that's in the hotel and it's... Uh, you know, serial killer thriller yeah. psychological thing. Not seen the Dead Zone. Not seen Maximum Overdrive. And I've I have seen the Running Man. The Running Man is kind of a game show. It's so that leads me to kind of think maybe a Gladiators took something from it. It's this is a brutally violent dystopian game show. Arnold is in it, and it's great. It's oh yeah, the Running Man is brilliant. Uh. I don't know anything about the Dead Zone or Maximum Overdrive. And Maximum Overdrive sounds like a big, like, alpha bro gladiator kind of mm. thing. But Gladiators is a little before my time. My brothers loved it and watched it, but it was it's just before me. Gladiators. I, I never... Yeah, yeah. I, mean, see, if, I know the theme, but I never watched if it. If you weren't a fan of Jet, then uh, you just weren't alive. Do you know what I mean? Jet was. Is that, yeah. I mean, that I know I know him by name, but I've no idea who he is. Because I, no, I, I no missed Jet, the show. No, 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 Jet. No, no, Jet was was one of the women. It was Jet, <laughs> Lightning, uh, and then the best one was Wolf, the guy. He, he was because he was the old guy. But uh, yeah, the Jet and Lightning man. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> bringing back my my youthful. <laughs> I mean, maybe obsessions. I should just Google it just to see them. Uh, yeah. But no, yeah, I'll go. Maybe I'll take a. I'll take a. A guess with the Running Man. Is the correct answer uh, only loosely based on the novel? It is based in 2019 in a total- totalitarian police state future. Con- well, congratulations! Something we'll no doubt be living in in no time. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that was my guess too. Um, so, well done. Four from five so far. Question number six: The cult cyberpunk anime Akira is set 31 years after a war. Although, which exact war was it? A. Asian nuclear war. B. Second corporate war, C, third world war, or D, fourth gulf war? Uh, the second corporate war, that's a cyberpunk thing, like in, in the cyberpunk game universe, in the in the corporate wars, the yeah. RPG game, the tabletop game. Yeah. 
Asian nuclear war is certainly a possibility. I've not seen Akira, but I'm like a little bit familiar with it. I've I've always wanted to watch it, but I never got around to it. It mm. looks really cool. Uh, Asian corp uh, Asian nuclear war is certainly a possibility because Akira is set in uh, Neo Tokyo, I think, uh, or something like. Well, it's Japanese anime anyway. So Third World War. I mean, it's so much stuff is after the Third World War because it's quite an easy, you know, yeah, target for something. Yeah. Fourth, go- fourth Gulf War. I'm not even sure how many Gulf Wars there have been. I'm not particularly educated on that one. <laughs> been one, haven't I? Uh, I'll go... Let's go Asian nuclear war. That's the one that rings true for me the most. You're going to answer Asian nuclear war? Let's do it. Uh, now that it's locked in, unfortunately, it's the wrong answer. The correct answer is the Damn. Third World War. You've, you've had six questions. You've not used a single lifeline and you've got two wrong maybe maybe you're going to borrow it but wrong now way. i get a lifeline for each each thing going forward well, I think. well no you got four left oh no yeah four left four, four left. left so you've got four answers correct answers from six so far you still got three lifelines and the next up we've got question number seven in the fifth element what is corbin dallas's job as he first introduced as he is first introduced in the film is it a police officer b fast food cook c Politician or D, taxi driver? Oh, it's been a long time since I've seen The Fifth Element. Uh, I am quite sure Corbin Dallas is Bruce Willis's character. And I think he's a taxi driver. But I can't remember if Corbin Dallas is definitely yeah. Bruce Willis's character and not somebody else. But who else would it be? The default would be that you'd go for the main character. It's definitely not Lilu, because she's a... She's like a, a, a alien thing. I can't really remember. Some, something um, strange. I reckon he's a taxi driver. Is that your final answer? Let's do it. Uh, it is the correct answer, and it was an answer that I knew too, because she falls through the roof of a taxi while she's driving. Yes, right? that's it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so the uh, flying taxi, isn't it? Yeah. So, correct. That is uh, five correct answers from seven so far. Three questions left. Three lifelines left. This is question eight. In the film series The Matrix, all scenes from within The Matrix were tinted. Although, what color? This is like a, a filter they put over the mm-hmm. screen. Is it A, brown, B, green, C, gray, or D, blue? I uh, am quite confident in the answer to this one because it's one of those like fun facts because you don't necessarily notice it when you first watch it. The Matrix is one color, then the real world is different. And the Matrix, I'm quite sure, is green because the, well, the code's green, so everything in the Matrix is green. And then when you're watching it, you kind of get a feeling that the, there's something not quite right in each world. I think it's really awesome, uh, like, change, but not everyone notices it. And then once you do, you're like, oh, I thought, yeah, look at that. So, green. Is the correct answer. Well done. Um, without using a lifeline, we're up to question number nine next. You do have six correct answers from eight. So question number nine is as follows. In William Gibson's cult novel, Neuromancer, what profession is the protagonist, Henry Case? Is he A, techie, B, hacker, C, street samurai, or D, solo? I have no idea. All I know is that those are like character builds for cyberpunk. Uh... I know William Gibson is widely credited with creating the cyberpunk genre. Other than that, I have no idea. So it's a lifeline time. Uh, what are my options? 50-50. Is it Google? Uh, like type the answer or are we doing like Ask ask Alexa? Oh, whatever. Whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, 50-50 won't help because it will just give me two random two answers. answers. I still don't know which one's which. <laughs> uh, what was my third lifeline? Ask you. I don't imagine you know too much about this <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, right, so I can do a three-word Google search, right? Yeah, that works. So what would I search? Uh, Neuromancer, Henry Case. That's three words, and surely that would come up as a Wikipedia article, and I'll probably get his name in the first paragraph. Right? Am I allowed, yeah. am I allowed to click on click on web pages and stuff? Mm. Mm. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Um... All right, you know it says, and it says if you if you Google Neuromancer Henry Case, right, third response down, and it's in it's there in the in the kind of short excerpt from the website. Okay, so that's fine then. Neuromancer Henry Case is definitely spelled 
that way, right? Yes. Go. Let's have a look. Case, Henry Dorset Case, is the protagonist of Neuromancer, William Gibson's first novel, and first installment of the Sprawling the Sprawl trilogy as anti hero. Case is dot dot dot. It's the third That's one not down. helping William Gibson fandom. It's the third ah, one. Ah, the down. Wikipedia page. He's a hustler, computer hacker, once talented computer hacker. So I, uh, yeah, I guess his job is a is a hacker it or his profession is correct. Uh, so because Hen- Wikipedia told you, so that is the ninth an- question answered, and you've got seven from nine, and we are up to question number ten. You got two lifelines. You can ask me, or you can fifty fifty. What is Judge Dredd's first name? A. Jonathan. B. Judge. C. Joseph. Or D. George. Uh, again, I, I I have no idea what his real name is, and I actually hope it's it's Judge. judge. <laughs> uh, can I use my fifty fifty because because I because I can absolutely. You're left with A. Jonathan or C. Joseph. Oh, not Judge. Oh, bollocks. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I could ask you as my final lifeline, but I don't imagine you know this one either. Fuck it. What do you think? <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't going to get you. Might as well use it. I wasn't going to give you any indication whether I knew it or not. I think um, Judge Joseph Dread, Judge Jonathan Dread. I think Judge Joseph Dread. I it could be either of those, to be honest. I, my, well, because my every every fictional character is called John. Yeah, All of them. Are. My, my first so. my first inclination was Jonathan Dread, but Joseph Dread. I don't. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I thought not. Um, fuck it. Let's go for Jonathan. John O. Dredd. John Dredd is the incorrect answer. The answer is Joseph Dredd. Well. Uh, so there you go. Uh, shot in the dark. Two lifelines didn't help. There you go. So the final score from this week's quiz, Henry, you scored a 7 out of 10. Congratulations, sir. That's a, that's a, a reasonable score. That's a weight on sale kind of game. You know, it's not yeah, too bad. It's, it's not great. Pretty, pretty good. It's not too so bad. It's fine. You might have a bit of fun. It's not going to win <laughs> a Game go. of the Year award or anything. Uh, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank Earthworm Band for the effort that's gone mm, into yes, this quiz. Um, hopefully, hopefully, didn't step on Metal Shark's t- toes. I'm, I'm sure it was all worked out behind the scenes, but um, we really do appreciate the effort that goes onto the quizzes, whether it's Metal Shark or Earthworm Band. Earthworm Band this week, huge thank you. Uh, we really appreciate it because, um, yeah, it's one of my favourite. Part of segments in the podcast. I'll, I'll be honest. It's, it's, it's always very. And we don't have to do any work to create it. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> no research necessary. Uh, thanks a lot. So let's move on to the questions then. And Henry, would you like to read the? Yeah. F- so this is a question from Earthworm Ben. So straight after the quiz. So at uh, Gaz and Henry crucified the Game Awards in their predictions last week, and it seems as if their predictions came true yet at the Golden Joysticks. Worse still, The Last of Us 2 won, uh, won awards in which it was very poor in and lost those in which many have said its strongest points, such as the acting of the characters. What are your takes on this? So I think it got five to read Game out? of the Year awards. Uh, yeah, so I did have it, I reported it this week as well, but I so can't remember. It won best well, storytelling. Lost. It won best visual design. It won best audio. Um, it won PlayStation Game of the Year, and it won Ultimate Game of the Year. And it got well, not the game, but Naughty Dog got Studio of the Year or, or something, whatever that. Oh yeah, Studio of the Year, something yeah, like that. It. So six awards to that studio. Um, yeah, I think it's it's ridiculous i think uh, mm. the fact that it didn't win uh um best acting it went to for either <clears throat> mild spoilers there you go there's your warning uh <laughs> ellie or abby for uh with um uh, ashley johnson or laura bailey it went to the girl who played kamala khan in marvel the marvel game yeah i can't remember what her name is she like she's great and all like she, she's good but she's not mm. Like Ellie or Abby, good. Like regardless of what you think of the game, those performance are performances are like incredible. So I think that's really weird. Um, storytelling, it's ambitious, which is good, and it tries some new things by f- forcing you to li- walk in the shoes of the person you hate. But I don't think it tells it in the best way. So yeah. storytelling, I don't think it yeah. it should win that award personally. I mean, brave bravery award. If there was a bravery award, you'd give it to Last of Us Two. You wouldn't give it storytelling, though. 
Uh, yeah, I think like, and, and there's a fine line between bravery and stupidity. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, the bravery slash and stupidity getting, award. And I'm pretty sure golden joysticks are entirely um, user-voted, I think. I don't think they have any critics on their, like, a panel or anything like that. I might be wrong that, but yeah. it's certainly more user-based than, say, the game awards are. Uh, so there you go, yeah. The, 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 yeah. Uh, the, what, there was one other one that I was I was kind of bugged by. What, what else did it win? Um, so it was Ultimate Game of the Year, PlayStation Game yeah. of the Year, Best Audio, yeah. Best Visual Design. Right. Audio, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's that's probably fine because it, it, when you shoot people in the face, there's a quite a, what I would imagine a realistic sound is. I've never shot someone in the face, but I imagine that's probably quite on it. Visual design or graphics or whatever it was called, that's fine. Like, it's fine. But it, it looks really good. It does look really good. But I don't think there's as much creativity in it because there's a lot of games that also look really, really good mm. for, like, raw fidelity and people looking like real people. Personally, I would have still given it to something like uh, Ghost or Hades. But but there you go. That's just I mean, me. it's, these, these awards don't really mean much, but... Um, no, yeah, I mean, they don't. It's horses for courses, isn't it? It's, it's... Oh, I know what I was going to say. That, what I originally was going to say. The fact that Naughty Dog got Best Studio even though they were public enemy number one a few months ago for crunch culture is hilarious mm, to me that is true. like i'm not i'm not i'm not that's not a comment on whether or not i believe the crunch or uh, you know approve of it or anything that's irrelevant but public discourse around it yeah they got so much flack on twitter and stuff and maybe this is exemplary of how twitter means nothing which i think is quite fair to say but so you yeah you're lambasted in the media for having crunch culture and then you win best studio of the year like <laughs> Okay. That's it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, thanks for the question, Earthworm Ben. Moving on to the next question, which is another Earthworm Ben question. I think this is the last Earthworm Ben question. Um, but thanks for the questions anyway. Immortal Phoenix Rising should be out of the time you read this. However, I'm currently looking at it and thinking, that's looking like a good game. Yeah. But the worst Ubisoft keeps, but the word, sorry. Yet yeah, the word Ubisoft keeps running my mind. And the question is, are there any devs that you just won't take a risk on despite how good a game looks? Even though previews, etc. Even though, even, sorry, even through previews, etc. Until you get somebody you trust doing a thorough playthrough of the game. Honestly, Valhalla looks fun, but t time is a commodity that I wouldn't want to waste on that game after your review. Are there any games um, that de devs that you won't take a risk on, Henry? Uh, the the most obvious example of the top of my head is uh, Activision with uh, well not a dev or a publisher but I can't remember which one developed it for uh, Modern Warfare called Duke Modern Warfare yeah. Pr promising this like real gritty visceral uh, first person shooter yeah it's gonna be real and I was like oh that looks cool I mean I'll, uh, like if that's what I wanted it to be which I know it isn't uh, that would be awesome but it's a Call of Duty game I know it's not what I want uh, and f everything I saw I think skill up put on his thumbnail or on his title exactly what i thought of it just from my like view, outside view from not having played it that it pulls every punch that some a game like spec ops the line throws like it doesn't have any of the teeth it thinks it does or wants you to think it does so i was like yeah, yeah i mean i'm not i'm not gonna bother with it i think in terms of uh triple a games and publishers i think you got to take all the market material marketing material with a pinch of salt a huge bucket load of salt re re even doesn't matter what they say the game is that doesn't matter we talked yeah. about it touched about it a little bit earlier with uh, marketing on, on cyberpunk but i think they've done a really good job in in correctly portraying what the game is going to play like whereas these other publishers they don't care they just want your money and this is why they're just faceless corporations who just want to absorb as, as much of your um of your money as possible because they, they doesn't matter what the game plays like to them it only matters that they part you with your money. And I think um, in terms of Beth Bethesda is the one that I can kind of, I think, yeah, that I, I'm really going to take a wait and look mm. uh, approach now. Having re having recently replayed Fallout 76 and just looked at the trash pile that that game is right now. Um, yeah, they've brought in uh, the way, um, the update where the, this, this human <laughs> NPCs have returned and now the Brotherhood of Steel have returned in this latest update. I love Fallout. I love the game. Um, 
the game loop in in, in all the all Fallout games. I absolutely despise Fallout seventy six. The game only exists to take your money. The netcode's so bad. I've got the fastest internet known to man. It's blistering, and I'm still getting internet spikes and and pauses and all sorts of shit. It's just the worst experience, the worst game experience I've had in a Fallout game. And it's the newest Fallout game. It makes me really sad, and it makes me think that I can never trust what Bethes- you know, what they were building it up to be in um, before long. Launch. Oh, we just want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, people to play with their friends and all this bullshit. Oh, do you need to get that get that door? Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> He's not going. I'll just keep waffling about Fallout 76. Um, I I just don't think it's um, it's something that I can ever trust again with Bethesda. We're talking about Star- Starfield will be coming up soon, so um, you know, hopefully in the next couple of years we'll be able to see what Starfield's like. And I, I, again, I'll take a wait and wait and see approach. Uh, because they obviously they need to make changes to their um, the game engine. Hopefully they, they updated that a little bit. Fallout Sensei looks looks like trash. Coming off the back of playing The Outer Worlds, which is one of the best of that type of RPG game um, that you can play. How, how, coming out of the, off the back of finishing that, jumping into Fallout Sensei 6 and then just seeing my ass with it again for like the third time. I don't even know why I wasted... The, I, I know <laughs> I could download it within like half an hour now, but my God, what a waste of time that was. I, I, I mean, I can't say <sighs> enough bad things. Henry's just returned. I'm just still going on about Fallout 76. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just I'm just keeping the th- this thing going. I mean, I've got enough to say well, about cool. how shit that is. But yeah, I, I will definitely um, not take the risk on a Bethesda game again because they've turned to the dark side of the, these last few years. They've gone, they don't care about gamers anymore don't care about the experience they just want to take your money and that's every triple a game i'm always i've always got to put the extra research i don't believe anything they say always always um get somebody who you trust to give their honest opinion of a game before you buy something uh that's just general good advice so thanks thanks for all your questions uh, not just the quiz but mr okay. Urkham and ben, we really appreciate that was it anything interesting? It wasn't a PC gaming PC by any chance? Was it no, not another one? <laughs> oh no 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 not another one. Not. Some it was for my girlfriend and the uh, when you buzz the doorbell for our flat, it keeps going until you open the door, Ugh. like it won't ever stop. So wow, you've just got to go deal with it. I think my girlfriend's out um, on on a run or something on her lunch. That's got to be annoying if you're out the house. And- like it will eventually stop. But it takes a long time. It will just go. For, so know your na- for, hell out of your neighbours. Oh it, yeah, but we hear theirs all the time as well. Yeah. Right. It's not so bad. Right, let's it's move my on. girlfriend's fault. She's always ordering shit, and at this time of year, with my birthday and Christmas so close, yeah. and I think her mum's birthday is also kind of soonish. Oh, don't get don't get me start, packages started. Everywhere. It's like three packages. Everywhere. It's like three packages delivered every single day to my house, and on three from three different couriers. So I'm answering the door yeah. most of the time, and so I'm just taking in her parcels like throughout the day. It's basically my job is to accept the parcels uh, because she orders so much shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Well, let's let's move on uh, from uh, whinging about our other halves okay. to the next question. All right. This is from the the saint that is Metal Shark. Question for Henry. What is the next title you'll try to play co-op with Larissa? Is there a backlog game which might work or a 2021 release you think may uh, appeal? Um, it's kind of a pain in the ass because I do have to twist her arm a little bit. Especially for the stuff that I really... I think she will like more, but I'm not very good at selling it. So Children of Morta is currently on Game Pass and that's one I think she could very easily pick up because we can play it together um so in case you don't know it's like a roguelite roguelite t- t- dungeon crawler yeah like pixel art very nice and with multiple characters all of different abilities and stuff so i think that would be great but it's the um the kind of rpg element she doesn't really get and i'm like don't worry about that if you don't care about it i can just do it it's fine but uh i think i think the good choice there on the game pass uh reminds me of in fact is minecraft dungeons i think you it's it's kind of a, a watered down version of Diablo, right? And in terms of getting her into, cause my kids played that, and that's on Game Pass too. My yeah. kids played that with me, and they they enjoyed it to a certain extent. So um, I suggest maybe taking a look at that too. Well, one I one I bought uh, in a sale, like I think at the beginning of the year, something like ages ago, which we haven't even played yet, is 
oh, what's it called? Oh, uh, A Way Out. The EA one, yeah. which is random that EA made it. Um, That's a good game. Two-player co-op. You have to play it in co-op. Yeah. And you have to play it with a real person. You can't do it with AI. And you're two people trying to escape a prison. And it's a kind of puzzle-solving thing. And it looks really, really cool. But I can't... I'm, I'm trying to convince her. She says yes, and then we don't do it for ages. But uh, we are going to play it because it looks really awesome. Yeah. Really, really creative, original it's quite, idea. It's quite an interesting game because it's, it's, it's kind of quite cinematic too. So it's it's kind of that yeah. that um, narrative-driven movie experience, but that you're playing with somebody else. So it's, it's a good one yeah. that, for a for a And you can, you can play it online and like separately, but the whole thing is in split screen. So you can always see what your your partner can see. Yeah. So uh, I think it's just really interesting. So I'm uh, hoping we'll, we can be able, we'll be able to uh, to give it a go. That's a good one. Uh, uh, there is a follow up question, which is for, specifically for you. Are you still considering getting Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, the augmented reality Switch RC game? And if so, are there any grand ambitions for track creation in the house? Um, I'm not um, the short answer because it's pretty expensive right it looks it's it, very it looks awesome but it's not something that i would just invest in and then just use once or twice and then the kids be maybe you know they've got so and you, you need two cars yeah which is i think oh, you, really you need to gets, invest yeah. in it properly i mean if yeah. it, i mean when i was a kid right we used to have remote control cars and i we, we had this like dirt patch in the garden where we'd just where i'd where i'd map out on a piece of paper how i wanted the track to be and we'd go and dig it all out and we'd like make this awesome track for our remote control cars it's something i would really enjoy if i was a kid however i'm an adult now and my kids are both <laughs> both girls and I, I know that shouldn't affect anything but they probably wouldn't enjoy it if uh, if i had a boy and i blame my wife uh, so uh, that's some 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 inner psyche issues there that I've got to deal with, but yeah, it's basically because I haven't got any boys. <laughs> I think I've overshared there, haven't I? Um, right, let's move on quickly uh, to the next question. Thanks for the question, Mr. Metal Shark. Cloning ninety nine. With all the delays and unannouncements and what not, what movies are you most excited for in the next couple of months? Personally, I want to see the new Black Widow movie and finally get my fix of MCU. Want to see the Snyder Cut, and I can barely wait for Wonder Woman any longer, despite the horrible cheetah looks from the cha- trailer. Also, maybe we'll finally get around to watch The Mandalorian. So movies, Henry. The Mandalorian isn't a movie, so... You know, you know, if you're opening the door to TV shows, I can talk about that. But first up, Henry. All right, on the, on, we, we've mentioned the word Mandalorian, so people might talk about it in the comments. No spoilers. No. By the time I've not seen this episode not comes seen. out, a new episode will have come out. Because currently it's... Thursday, the episode will be out yeah. to patrons on Friday, to the public on Sunday. So don't fucking spoil anything. No. Uh, but so just as a warning, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm currently up to date as of now, right? But I'm yet to watch this week's episode because it's currently not out yet. But it will be, yeah. So <laughs> warning out of the way. Black Widow, yes, really up for that. So Black Widow was supposed to come out in May, this May, the one that was months ago. Then it was supposed to be November, and then they. The whole MCU, well, Disney's structure is they all, like, knock on to each other, like a uh, set of dominoes. So they've all moved back. I think Eternals was meant to be in November when Widow was in May, so that's all moved. Up for that, I I was excited for it. I'm kind of less excited for it because I feel like it's been so long for an MCU movie, and I feel like this one, it's not going to be the big the big reopening for the MCU. Obviously, if you don't like the MCU, like you don't give a shit about the MCU movies, which is totally fine, but this is going to mean nothing to you. And I feel like to kick off the next phase, they need to... Ideally, they would have had a bit more of a a, a go of Yeah. Because even, even before lockdown and everything, it was kind of a wait between Spider-Man and Widow. I think it was about a year. Maybe, maybe nine months, something like that. So I am excited for it, but I'm tentative. Snyder Cut... I'm interested in. I'm not sure I'd use the word excited, but I'm interested in because it is an unprecedented thing. So that's the Justice League came out a few years ago was shit because they had swapping directors and a few meddling behind the scenes thing, photoshopping a moustache out, all kinds of problems. But now the original director has teamed up with the original cast and, and everyone behind, involved to re-release it called the Snyder Cut. I think it's going to be four, a four-hour block or four parts like, like kind of like a mini series right. for the justice league with abandoned plot lines put back in and deleted scenes and this that and the other it's meant to be 
the real version and kind of revitalize the the DC movies. Yep. But that the Justice League movie was shit. Uh, the Batman vs Superman movie was also shit. Uh, so it's not, Snyder's DC run isn't that exemplary. So I'm really not expecting big things. But I'm I'm interested in it. I think it's an unprecedented thing for it to come out like this and such a fan you know response. Yeah. So I think it could be cool. Wonder Woman, yeah, Wonder. I'm, I'm I've not really paid much attention to Wonder Woman because I'm like I'm already on that train. Like I, I've barely paid attention to any of the media around it. So I'm like, yeah, I'll watch Wonder Woman when it comes out. It's meant to be coming out on Christmas Day now, so I'm not going to watch it then. But I'll watch it at some point. Yeah. Uh, what's out? Oh, the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. If you haven't watched the Mandalorian, watch the Mandalorian. It's it's awesome. It's it's it lacks a real story, like a overarching narrative. And we get like the whole. Th- I've said it a hundred times. The the show's a fucking video game. He does a he does a quest. He gets a thing. He does a side quest. He gets a thing. He literally will get a new bit of armor or a weapon or, or a gadget or something. It's cool, but it needs a bit more actual plot yeah. over the top. Other than that, it is brilliant. It looks gorgeous. Yeah. It's good Star Wars, like it's Star Warsy. Um, and we're getting a little bit more proper plot. So hopefully we get a bit more in tomorrow's episode, which you may have already seen by the time you yeah. watch it. Um, so I mean, that was quite a long answer, I'm afraid. Yeah. The things I'm looking forward to, I think. Um, I mean, I I don't watch a lot of movies. I'll be honest. Uh, so it's like TV shows. And uh, what TV show am I looking forward to? There's there's one, and I just can't. Just can't think of it right now. But stuff I've been, I can talk about some th- stuff I've been watching. Have you watched seen the Queen's Gambit? Oh no, my girlfriend watched it recently, so I kind of had like a little eye on it every mm. now and then. I was like, that looks really good, but I haven't uh, got around. It's to It's been it. talked about. Um, you know, it's about mm. chess, right? So everyone's like, mm-hmm. but it sounds. But, super then, dull. but then everyone else who's seen it are like, you, you should watch it. It's yeah. good. It's so well acted. It's so well written. It's it's so well made. It it takes you on the journey of this. Um, of this prodigy, right? She 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 discovers she's got this. She's an orphan. She discovers, discovers she's got this amazing talent for chess, and then you go on a journey with her. Uh, uh, and it's I know it's spine tingling at, at points. It, it really is worth watching, and it's one of those series that you won't get a sequel to it. It's it's just one one self enclosed story, and then you're done. I think it's seven episodes. Yeah. I love a good mini series, and, like and you know, it's, there's no filler. There's no like, oh, uh, they're just dragging this out to make it to ten episodes, and then they're gonna they'll leave you on a on a cliff cliffhanger. It, it's not like that. It's a it's a proper stand up Netflix series, the way that Netflix should be doing it. And I think yeah. like, I can't I can't say any better things about enough good things about that um, show. So I definitely um, recommend you watch it. So uh, this one just popped into my head again. It's a Netflix show. Uh, I'm pretty sure the se- series two of The Witcher comes out next the Witcher, year. Yeah, this one's which, look out which uh, I'm quite, I mean, the first series has plenty of its own problems, but I'm excited for that. But recently, so me and my girlfriend went and had a bit of time away in um, the Lake District, and around the same sort of time, her parents were also away around different parts of the country, and they completely stumbled across where they were filming part of. Um, the Witcher series too. It's just a you know, big fancy waterfall that looks kind of like a fairy tale, just you know, on location set. And the the crew and stuff were just like, yeah, you can be here, but don't go through yet because we're filming and just can try and keep quiet and everything. They had no idea what The Witcher was, no right. idea who Henry Cavill was. What? Uh, and uh, so they sent they sent this to uh, my girlfriend. And like, oh, so there's this the show called um, The Witcher. <laughs> And uh, uh, they're, they're for Netflix, it's meant to be a quite big thing. And she showed it to me. I was like, "You take the piss. Why the fuck are we not there? Why, why, why are we not there?" <laughs> like, on the so Netflix, awesome. the fil- yeah, making basically. it for the Netflix. <laughs> yeah, uh, they didn't. They didn't really see anyone. Like, and if they did, they would have been in um, like like waterproofs uh, under the waterfalls. And then they take them off, shoot the scene, then put it back on and go back into yeah. their trailer or whatever. So uh, I was very frustrated. But yeah, which which series two should yeah, be cool? That's cool. Right, you're you're up next. Okay, Derlock Sergio just wants to drop a quick question. How was your birthday, Henry? Did you get anything gaming related? We don't want to know if you get any underwear with an elephant's trunk. Oh, elephant's trunk! I bloody wish. So, gaming related. The, well, the the PC is kind of birthday present esque, and I like I, I'm kind of thinking the the monitor. I justified spending about three hundred quid on it as a as a present to myself. Um, I didn't get a single video game. I didn't really ask for any, so that, that's not a surprise Like from my mum or anything. She's normally up my ass, like, oh, do you sure you want a game or anything? I'm like, well, no, not, not really. I've got everything covered. 
Uh, it's not really, but on the topic of pants, my my <laughs> girlfriend. I did know that this wasn't a surprise either. We had talked about it since you're talking uh, about pants. Kind of, well, yeah, <laughs> she made me uh, a effectively a advent calendar for pants. I've got oh. 24 little little pouches of um of pants. And wow, there's a different one for each day. That's and amazing. they're currently like hung up uh, on a like along a shelf, and it's great. So you've got like 24 about... different G-strings to wear, one each day. Absolutely. They're all... Uh, this is what you uh, should if, be if buying if her, there's dude. Not, <laughs> if there's not a leopard print furry mankini <laughs> type thing, I'm going to be gutted. That's going to be a bar out, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's got to be. Um, but yeah, so now I don't have to do any laundry for, for pants oh, that's anyway. That's amazing. Uh, for, for a good long time, and it's great. That's a great person. And I literally then sent a message to my mum being like, with a, with a picture of all all of these pouches of pants please for the love of god i know it's what mums do you get pants and socks do not get me any pants yeah. at christmas socks fair game totally fine do whatever you want but don't get me any bloody pants Great present um, and the, so far i'm on day three it's a pretty good pretty good set Doing of pants. All right, yeah and you a fresh pair of pants every day i mean that's that's living the dream okay exactly let's move on to the final question of this week this is from oh is it did there was another one i think i'll uh, just have to check that in a sec but um ravaged uh it's a pretty lengthy one hi guys first a big thank you for keeping me entertained while i have been in hospital the past few weeks that alone is the reason for the increase to 10 pounds a month there you go um ravaged thank you again for your increase in pledge this month he continues, having come home to an Xbox Series X and cancelled PlayStation 5, thanks Amazon, I've been the luckiest, luckiest unlucky guy I know. First world problems, eh? But all this rubbish about Sony's great launch lineup has left me scratching my head. Demon Souls, Spider-Man Miles Morales and Bug Snacks. Why does the media keep going on about this and why is it so one-sided? I know Xbox did not have any super big titles, but these games are not much more than remasters, something Microsoft has done a lo for, to a load of games for free. Gears 5, Forza and RE all upgraded and all looked great and had a lot of work put into them. All great games, but Microsoft did not charge £70 like Demon's Souls did. I heard the complaints of people saying, I just paid £450 and got nothing to play on it, but I'm like, so... If you buy a £700 new graphics card for your PC and don't get new games straight away, your older games play your older games play better. I, I totally get um, your point of view here. And this is exactly why I kind of I, I kind of raised the question of the week. It's like, you don't need... Like, you got a new console. Like, you can play your, all your old games on it. And I kind of got a drubbing in there um, by yourself, Henry, and by the commenters. Like, you need, you need exclusives. You need games to be able to play. And it was like, you can play all your older games. But I guess that's... Coming from my PC, I'm not paying 450 quid to pay to play a game I've already no, got. I get that. that just I get brilliant. that. I get that. I, I I'll pay. I I'll pay like that. a little bit for it, like if a 200 quid for a PS5 or something in in four years. But, but coming from a PC gaming mentality, that's that's quite. Yeah. It's quite. Uh, it's quite a common thing to do. Just upgrade your hardware and just play the same games but better. Um, so I think that's a, a bit of different perspectives there. So his question is: I want to know why you think Xbox gets so much hate and Sony gets a pass from media. Uh, you guys are definitely excluded as you shit on everyone in fair amounts to be fair <laughs> i can uh, uh can i just say that i'm not a place xbox or playstation fanboy i have been in the uk uh i have been both in the uk gets more ps5 stock i don't know what that means i've been both in i will have both once the uk gets more ps5s in stock yeah thanks for that henry uh, but having worked on Gears Tactics, I might have a stronger lean one way than the other. I didn't know that. That's uh, a nice nugget to just leave, leave there. Just like, oh, I worked on Gears Tactics, by the way. Uh, keep it the great work, guys, as always. Um, why do you think Xbox gets so much hate and Sony gets a pass from the media? Me, I personally think um, it, it, it's, it, it, it seems true. It seems like PlayStation, people look at PlayStations with rose tinted glasses. And I, I, I don't know. It's, I, Xbox is the, it's, it's easy to. It's this. It's easy to to criticize Xbox because oh, it's not. There's no games. There's no exclusives. No, there's no. There's no Spider Man. There's no God of War. There's no uh, Days Gone. There's no Last of Us. You know, this, it's it's easy to point at a certain game and say like this. This console's got this. This other console hasn't got that. It's easy to criticize Microsoft because they don't have these big hitters like um, PlayStation do. 
Um, why do we think it gets so much hate? I, I, don't, I don't know whether hate is the correct term, but I think it's criticised. It's, the sooner to criticise it because it's easier to, I guess, because it's... Mm. Because I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's easier to... Easier target. Yeah. That's what I, I say. I don't know about that many outlets maybe I've just not seen it but I don't know about that many outlets saying Sony's great launch lineup I mean I, th- I think I've seen quite a lot being saying both have quite a weak launch lineup but yeah. Sony is better in terms of like exclusives because they do have Miles Morales although you can play that on PS4 Bug Snacks although you can play that on PS4 and Sackboy although you can play that on PS4 da- uh, Demon's Souls is the only one that is only on PS5 Yeah, and that's a remake so that all of those uh, exclusives have caveats, but Microsoft doesn't even really have any of those, which is which which is its problem for a lot of people, including in, including me, as I've said. Like, there's no reason to get an Xbox at, at this point. Maybe I mean, yeah. I'm sure later down the line, perfectly good reason when like uh, a new Gears comes out. I'm a huge Gears fan, or Halo. Although that game really looks like it's a shit show right now, based on all the problems behind the scene. Uh, but yeah, there is definitely. A bias, well, a bias in the media. Gosh, who knew? I've been, <laughs> I've had lengthy exchanges with my dad about this recently. It's been a real hoot and a half. Um, <laughs> it's all political. He's a grumpy old man, so he really oh, goes off on it. Right. And yeah. no, no one, we never give him give him an inch because he won't shut up. But I've I've, igno- I've like accepted that I've fully opened the can of worms now. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's two parts. I think most people, I think, would say that PlayStation has won the last console generation. More success, more units sold, more critically acclaimed games, more popular games. Virtually every metric you can say Sony's won. So I think a lot of journalists are gamers, so they also agree, they share that opinion, and then it ends up going into their work. But also, most people, because most people like PlayStation over Xbox based on last gen, they're going to twist their content around that because viewers are more likely to engage with it. Like, if you put look at look at Sony's great launch, more people are going to click on that because more people like Sony. Versus look at Microsoft's great launch, fewer people like Xbox, so fewer people will click on that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense in my little brain, anyway. We are but simpletons here. But anyway, thanks for your question. 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 There's no R in question. Uh, we agree there is a pro, a pro Sony bias, and we. I'm always accused of being a, a Sony Sony pony, but it's mm-hmm. not my fault. Sony does better games. But we do there have one go. final question, which I've, I've brought over. I think it's the very last one. Yes, it is. Yep, it is uh, from Cloney. Hey, with your new internet, Gaz, are you planning on streaming again? Or is Twitch dead to you? I'd understand with the adpocalypse on Twitch these days and all. Just curious. Um, I don't know. Twitch was a thing we used to do when um, when there was a, a few of us and we'd have a like good time together doing it. I think streaming, I'd have to do it on my own now. Um, so it's a bit more of an undertaking. I wouldn't rule it out. I've been considering it, in fact, but I'd probably not choose Twitch because Twitch has such a limited amount of um, people watching on Twitch. I think if we were to stream, it might be on YouTube. And uh, I don't know, I'd, I'd see if Henry was available and I'd get someone to bounce off of rather than just doing my own because I think yeah. uh, streaming on your own is... I. I mean, everyone goes shit for streamers. Oh, you don't do anything, you get paid for it. It's not easy, man. <laughs> it really isn't easy. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It's not, it doesn't come natural to me, but I, w- I wouldn't rule it out. I, I've definitely been thinking about it. Um, maybe I'll be brave enough to do it at, what, at some point, but um, I probably wouldn't choose Switch because we'd probably make make it better, con- you know, be able to generate content better, you know, ex- be exposed to more people on YouTube because there's so many more people watching. I, I might, you know, get in cyberpunk and playing through that a little bit i might decide to do that we'll see it, de- it depends because i'm always very skeptical that anyone would give a shit everyone would anyone would watch at all because like who wants to that, watch us that's what kind of what i think like, i often think oh maybe i should start streaming even if it's just like nothing to do with pg just like as a personal thing just for a bit of fun it often dawns on me my internet could probably handle it although since lockdown it's got way fucking mm. worse but but that's because everyone's using it all the time um but one of my big things is if I'm playing a game, I want to play the fucking game. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to have to be entertaining and have to be on and, and managing chat mm. and everything. Uh, so I don't. Know, I, I I wouldn't want something like streaming to get in the way yeah. of the way that's, I like to play, which is point. on my own, 
in my own little space looking like a fucking troll yeah. covered in you in know, your pants crumbs. in your 10 pairs of pants yeah. or however many pairs you yep, got on exactly in your <laughs> got space invaders pants on today so it's it's appropriate <laughs> or on your borat pants just nothing else yeah that's it yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. You, you know oh no but if, if i did that then we get banned because of my, my nips would probably be on show uh, can't be having that can't, it's against the rules yeah, it's, there you go there's the 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 hazards of streaming these days <laughs> you can't do borat pants i'm not fucking interested right there we go thanks very much Coney, for your question and thanks to everybody else for all your questions as well if i didn't get around to thanking you i do apologize i'm thanking you now thank you very much let's move on to the next segment which we've kind of altered it was historically triggered fanboy comment of the week but we've had to alter it and this week we've got the pretty good gaming fanboy of the week <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've, I've I've got a couple. They're just nice, just nice comments that I'm gonna brush my ego with because they're being friendly and um, that's it. Like they're not they're not particularly like thought provoking or like many talking points like a good trigger fan. But trigger fan, really, I think the advantage of them is that they're so triggered they often leave a paragraph. Yeah. So there's lots of stuff to break down. But these are just a couple simple sentences. Nice ones, that yeah. Say nice. We all things. need a bit so of validation like... every now and again. So don't exactly. don't bl- hold it against us. We all need a bit of a pat on the back. So yeah. So fortunately, I've got a couple two here which are kind of along the same lines, and it is on which video was it? Cyberpunk 2077, surprisingly good on last gen. Uh, Squeenix, pres- President Explains Avengers Failure, and the Golden Joysticks, which was on the 27th, with my, which I think was Friday. I think it was Friday. So, first person here, the Yorkshire Bob. Quoting me, a faint fart in front of the in-laws. Bravo. Talk about painting a metaphor. <laughs> yeah. Genius. And then I even uh, I commented back saying, I was actually quite proud of that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did think it was quite fun. Yeah. That was good. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much. I, I did like that one. And then, where's my next one? Oh, this is from uh, Cron Zexus. Cron Zexus. Bro, I like your writing. I hope you'll be on this channel for a long time to come. Thank you. I like writing. That's what I started doing before I, I thrust in front of the yeah. the the camera well, over two years ago now. It, it takes a bit of um, getting used to being in front of camera and hosting and and just seeing the creative process from start to finish it's it's one thing being a writer it's another thing being a presenter and it's another thing doing both right so i think over over passage of time you can clearly see how you've improved your craft and you and you're starting to come out of yourself now you're starting to um, you know, if I can pile on to this, uh, <laughs> to this uh, <laughs> legitimate mountain of there praise. you go. Yeah, I, th- I think Henry, you, you are doing such a great job these days. I do want to take the time to to say that these guys aren't unfounded in in their praise of you. You're doing a great job um, for on behalf of me and everyone watching. Um, it's it's nice to see you coming. You know, you blossoming. Let's say and uh, becoming the content creator we always knew you could be. <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, well, that I, mean, that I need to get on the t-shirt. Can you hear me yes. now? Yes. Ah, there we go. That's good. Does something happen now? Right. It just yeah. Just I had the notification from Zoom cut across my screen saying internet problems, but I could hear everything you were saying. I think it just stopped broadcasting. Oh, maybe you're all right on your side. Well, so that's good. I think we're okay now. Okay, and on, on that well, note, <laughs> yeah, go on, carry on. Uh, well, uh, yeah, that, that's it. I mean, you just flooded me with praise, and the the internet couldn't take it. You couldn't take it. I'm used to getting so much so abuse from people. Literally shut people down the internet, nice. internet. Yeah. I mean, this is it. This yeah. is what happens when the when we throw out the triggered fanboy and start and start patting each other on the back. The internet doesn't can't can't deal with it's it. It's a conspiracy from the, uh, the academic elite to control the world. Um, <laughs> uh, so on that note, on this like uh, no, Anne Glada Frank says, "What's wrong with your computers, dude? Seriously, you're like at eight FPS in like last week. We did have a bit of yeah, a problem. That was bad." Um, that was bad uh, and it just didn't record properly yeah. or broadcast properly it was it should be fine today um, hopefully and, and another another point as well another, makes another good point oh and Shenmue talking about the quiz last week when I was questioning the validity of the answer um, Shenmue had successful sales with 1.2 million on release but budget went way overboard so the correct answer is definitely the budget it was the biggest video game budget for a long time so I, I guess you put it in those terms um, that 
that response is justified. But I'll, I will always argue that I was right because I'm one of those people who just can never be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the topic of Gaz being wrong and needing correcting, this is on last week's podcast, I think. Yes. From James Denton, simply scalping a wonderful Christmas time is clearly the best oh, option. Oh, you couldn't wait Sorry, to read that Gaz. one, could you? You couldn't. I could read. not. It's right at the top of the uh, of the, the video as well. It's the top comment on my screen, so it's perfect. Yeah, I'm sure you liked and favorited that one, didn't you? Anyway. No. <laughs> um, so I've got another comment. Uh, another nice comment. This is a bit of a theme this week. Random Gamer 790 states love your content every person i've recommended to your channel over the years still watches to this day never give up exclamation mark there you go we're not, we're not going to give up as long as you keep watching yeah. um so long as we still afford to pay the bills we won't we won't give up uh, that's that's the short and curlies of it that is literally it if we can't afford it we might have to get day jobs um <laughs> but otherwise we yeah exactly back to back to doing you know factory work for me i guess um yeah, if you can, as long as you guys support us watching and liking and head over to Patreon, we will we'll continue. That's a simple fact. Um, we'll be able to continue. Um, have you got any more? I've got a couple more. Uh, yeah, I've got one here. It wouldn't be fair to just correct you. So I've got a correction on me, but this this is how you do a correction. It's it's clear and it's polite. Um, actually, and it, it tells me why I'm wrong. It's not an I'm actually at all. It's uh, It's just... Here's information. Oh, just so you didn't know. So this is from the underscore techno. And it is from, again, the video about CDPR being surprisingly, no, Cyberpunk 2077 being surprisingly good on last gen. Henry, as I can imagine, you'll be talking about how much CDPR makes from Cyberpunk 2077, etc. in the future. The Polish, and it, so it looks like an L with it's got a line through it, but I don't know how you say that letter. The currency. L. L yeah. Zloty. Uh, slash L is pronounced like a W in English. So oh, it right. looks like Zlotty, but with a with a line yeah. through the L. But it's actually Zwati. Zwati. Love the daily triples. Uh, keep it up. So it's not Zlotty, it's Zwati. And it is a W, not a V, because often in, uh, you know, uh, Polish and stuff, uh, Russian and all the Eastern European languages, they can be a bit confusing. But this man says it's a W, so thank you very much. That's how you tell someone they're doing it wrong. Zwati. It is Polish Zwati. Polish Zwati. Uh, we've been correct in the past to tell us to pronounce it Zwati. So I don't know, maybe you can um, batter it out between yourselves, all those um, Poles among I mean, you. Yeah, it's, it's up to you. Maybe it is Zwati, Zwati. as well, if, the, if it's a W. Who knows? Who knows? We'll just, we'll just keep guessing. Um, so on the topic of uh, you, again, Henry, another nice comment here. Meliodas Sama comments Henry looks great with a beard and not only <laughs> and not only that Mickey Moose uh, replies with his beard and new lighting Henry looks handsome as hell well I do this light is great I mean it's very intense because it doesn't have a shade or anything it's just a bulb there and like if I turn it off it is, it's just kind of you know flat mm. but on I've got this, this you know, yeah, I mean, warm glow turn, turn it off again Hang on, where's the button? Nah, not not doing it for me. Yeah. Turn it on. Is it that much turn of a on. difference? Oh, oh my God, the, the handsomeness when you turn that on, Henry. You're so handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it makes much of a difference, but um, no, Mickey I'm Moose reckons. Either, but, uh, Mickey, Mickey Moose reckons it does. Oh, thank you. you. Um, well, <laughs> I've got one here. A uh, regular commenter who has had, on this one occasion, a, a mild change of heart. Jason Mitchell, who you may remember from other comments telling us off for being late to stories, but only ever saying we're late, never that we're you know early or beat anyone else, but this time. This is odd. You guys have beat any other news reporter I had. I'm glad about this. I'm glad, I'm glad about this. Hated when this channel got no attention. So this is on the Warcraft... Excuse me. Warcraft 3 Reforged still isn't what is promised, and it's... It's barely a news story, really, because it's just me stealing it from Reddit, and I didn't even acknowledge that in the video. It's a guy just listing all of the problems that are still there and all of the shit that still hasn't been fixed. Yeah. But, well, credit to, to you, um, Jason Mitchell, because you do have a go at us when we're late. It's a, we, I've talk, I'm pretty sure you've been a Triggered fanboy before. Um, I think you were literally like last week. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I don't... You, call, you say we're late to shit. Often, it's because of X, Y, and Z. It's not just because other stuff is going... Like yeah. we're not just late. It's like I've, it happens on a Friday, and I can't record till Monday or something like that. But 
you, you, you admit in this one case yeah. we beat everyone else credit, no one else credit like. where it's due this once even though fucking yeah. all the time I'm beating everyone else but I never get any credit if this doesn't make the list of the top and watch them get more views on it when they pick it up yeah. no, definitely <laughs> one of the greatest comebacks of all time um, Henry being late to being first right and how, how much <laughs> must he value and uh, not value all the work that we create um just it's because, three just because um, it's not being it, it's not being in time for him. Like it's like the only thing he values with his news consumption on on YouTube, whatever, mm-hmm. is the time at which it's delivered, how quickly it's delivered. It's not who gets the, yeah. the who, who does the best. Exactly. Job. Not 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 how well you you um, portray the story, how in depth you go, how balanced you are. None of that cares. It just matters whether you're first. <laughs> um, but there you go. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, comments. I think I'm done now. There was. Mm-hmm. I think that was yeah, that's a nice one to finish on. I did have another one, but it's just kind of whatever. That's a nice one to end on. All right, then. So with that, let's move on to the next segment, which is the Bad Dad Joke of the Week. Okay, tons has contributed today's Bad Dad Joke of the Week. And he says, fine. I was in a liquor store and the owner asked me, do you need help? I said, yes. But I'll have a bottle of whiskey instead. But um, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. It'll, it'll care for you more than any yeah. other bit of help can. Should have said Henry's in a liquor store, asking for a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. Um. So I th- yeah, is that enough for you? Or do you want another one? I, I'm, I'm doing it. I mean, it'd, it'd be weird to do just one. You okay. got to do a couple at least. What's it called when you tickle a man to death by accident? I don't know. What's it called when you tickle a man to death by accident? Manslaughter. Man's laughter. Man's laughter. Oh, uh, man's uh, laughter, uh, right. Uh, uh. Okay, next up, uh, the uh, very last. Um, my wife, you need to do more chores around the house. Me, can we change the subject? My wife, okay, more chores around the house need to be done by you. <laughs> That's not even a joke, but... Uh, uh, yeah, that sounds pretty familiar. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, Henry. Um, some life lessons there from uh, today's last joke. And that kind of concludes the bad dad jokes of the week and leaves us one last segment which is the ending segment which is where I just say thank you everyone for watching and if you have watched this long into the podcast and you want to see us continue head to Patreon honestly can't can't say enough times that we need your help patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming or uh, channel memberships here on YouTube really really appreciate everyone who supports us and there's nothing else to do but to say thank you for watching thank you to Henry for participating we'll see you again in the next video until then bye for now Boom.